Anatomically, the stomach has four different parts. The cardia, which is the smallest part, measures around one to three centimeters in length and lies distally to the esophagus. The fundus is a dome shaped portion and lies uh, below the left hemidiaphragm and above the esophageal cardiac junction. The body or corpus is the largest portion, which is separated from the distal most portion which is called as the antrum by a line which is called as incisional angle like this. Then we have two curvatures. The superomedial curvature is called as the lesser curvature, whereas the inferior lateral curvature is called as the greater curvature. Distally, the pyloric antrum is attached to the proximal portion of the duodenum. The perception of the stomach that also shows the distal portion of the esophagus and the proximal portion of the duodenum. The area of fundus and the corpus has a lot of rough rugal folds as they have oxantic mucosa, which undergo major dilatation during the accommodation of food. The rugal fold gets even more prominent when the stomach is empty. The uh, pyloric mucosa uh, is stronger in shape and is more firmly attached to the cell mucosa underneath. Four histological layers of stomach from innermost to outer lumen. If you go to the outermost, these are mucosa, cell mucosa, muscularis propria, and serosa. The mucosa is lined by tall columnar mucus secreting epithelium and um, then we have the lamina propria, which mainly has the connective tissues, blood vessels, and lymphatics, and muscularis mucosae. The muscularis mucosae has two layers, the inner circular and the outer longitudinal layer. The submucosa lies in between the muscularis mucosae and the muscularis propria. The submucosa mainly has the connective tissue, that is the elastic fibers, the mesonary plexus of nerves, veins and arteries and lymphatics. The function of Messner's plexus of nerves is to control the secretion of the glands and the blood flow. The muscularis propria has three layers, the inner oblique, middle circular and the outer longitudinal layer. The function of the muscularis propria is to control the peristaltic movement. The serosa is the outermost layer which is derived from the peritoneum and is surfaced by the mesothelial cells. These are the four histological layers of the stomach. The innermost is the mucosal layer. The outer boundary of the mucosal layer is the muscularis mucosae. Then we have the submucosa which is rich in connective tissues, blood vessels and lymphatics. Under the submucosa, we have the thick muscularis propria, and the outermost layer is the serosal layer. This slide shows the four histological layers of stomach and also shows the three layers of the muscularis propria that is, the inner oblique, middle circular, and the outer longitudinal layer. It shows the gastric mucosa and some mucosa. The mucosa is lined by the tall columnar mucin secreting epithelium with the gastric pits or foveoli in between. The deeper gastric glands are also seen in the mucosal layer that lies just above the muscularis mucosae. Underneath the muscularis mucosae is submucosa that is rich in lymphatics, connective tissues, and blood vessels. In this figure, we see the comparison between the antrum mucosa and the body mucosa. What we need to remember is the antrum mucosa and the cardiac mucosa are similar structure-wise. Similarly, the mucosa of the body and the fundus are similar structurally. In this figure, we can see that the antrum pits are much deeper in comparison to the pits of the body. The antrum pit comprises around or maybe more than 50% of the entire mucosal thickness in comparison to the body where the gastric pit comprises around lesser than 25% of the entire thickness of the 
mucosa. This slide shows the oxygenative mucosa with predominantly showing the chief and parietal cells. The lining epithelium is tall columnar mucus secreting type. On the right side is the higher magnification of the lining epithelium with uh, the tall columnar property and uh, mucus secretion. The tall columnar mucus secreting foveal epithelium on this slide over the over the right side shows the gastric surface epithelium with cytoplasmic mucus present in multiple small vacuoles. Unlike the deeper glands, the surface and foveal lining cells are similar throughout all the mucosal zones of the stomach. In this figure, the foveal epithelium, due to presence of mucin, shows pass positivity, which is expressed as magenta color. Histochemically, the foveolar mucus is all neutral, pass positive, but ancient blue negative at pH 2.5 and lower. This figure shows the gastric pyloric mucosa. The pyloric glands are composed of uh, mucus secreting cells with abundant clear foamy cytoplasm. The cardiac mucosa and the pyloric mucosa, they look alike structurally as already mentioned earlier. But the difference between the them two is number one, the pyloric glands secrete neutral mucin only, whereas the cardiac glands secrete predominantly neutral mucin with small amounts of cyanomucin. And number two, the gastric mucosa so the presence of gastrin immunohistochemical stains that highlights a band of G-cells, whereas the cardiac mucosa lack the gastric gastrin immunohistochemical stains. This figure shows uh, mucin cell depletion in the foveolar epithelia, which is manifested as a darker pinkish coloration in comparison to the normal foveolar epithelium with mucin. This is a, a cartoon image of gastric oxantic mucosa which has superficial isthmus. The superficial isthmus has dark pink viral cells that helps in acid secretion and intrinsic factor secretion. The intrinsic factor is required for vitamin B12 absorption. The base has purplish bluish chief cells and enterochromaffin like endocrine cells. The function of the chief cells is to produce pepsinogen. The neck has a mixture of chief cells, parietal cells and mucus cells. The function of the mucus cells is to help in mucosal regeneration. This image shows the mucosa of the corpus or the body of stomach. It has uh, the pits and the oxygenic glands or the deeper glands. The oxygenic glands show the pinkish isthmus and bluish space with the neck showing the mucus cells which are uh, clear and have eccentrically placed nucleus. Uh, this picture shows the magnified portion of the parietal cells and the cheap cells. The parietal cells are pinkish in coloration, granular, and have centrally placed nuclei, which give them the typical appearance of fried egg. If you look at the bluish cells, which are the peptic cells, these have the granular purple cytoplasm, and basally place nucleus. The staining property of the parietal cells, that is the pinkish coloration, is due to the presence of microcanaliculi, which is basically protein. Whereas 
the bluish coloration of the cytoplasm of the chief cells is due to the presence of rough endoplasmic reticulum containing ribosomal ribonucleic acid. This picture shows a gastrin immunohistochemical stain that highlights a band of G cells. Now these G cells are exclusively found in the gastric antrum. Their presence can be exploited to identify site of tissue origin. A cardia, although has similar mucosal zipper glands, would not have gastrin G cells and thus lack gastric immunohistochemical stain. Are the inflammatory cells in the stomach normal? Well, if we see intraepithelial lymphocytes, which do not exit more than 25 per 100 epithelial cells, then it is normal. Similarly, in the lamina propria, if we see uh, more than 2 to 5 lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages per hyperfill, or if you see two to three lymphocytes or plasma cells in between the gastric foveally, then it is considered normal. If you see small number of primary lymph lymphoid follicles or the aggregates of small lymphocytes, then it is considered normal. However, if you see secondary lymphoid follicles, that is the follicles with germinal centers, then we should consider uh, secondary infection with Helicobacter pylori. And uh, these are my references. Thank you for listening.